I think that sometimes when you become so fixated on something that you want, you don't realize that there's something bigger coming for you. And then you miss out on that because you're just like, well, this is what I want. It's like, you know, you see this like beautiful house that is a nice big house and you're so fixated on, I want that house. Right, right. But what if there's a fucking mansion yeah. that's 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 waiting for you and all you could see was that house? house yeah. You know what I mean? That's all it. you've been fixated and focused on. So yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, so that's why I say like, you know, I would love... I would love for my music to go to the highest level, but yeah. I'm not I'm not fixated on anything. I'm just fixated on making sure that I'm making myself happy. I'm, you know, I'm doing things in the way that I feel comfortable, in right. the way that, you know, I'm growing right. as a person, I'm growing musically. Right. Um, and I focus more on, like, also the fans, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like people also get really caught up in, like, industry stuff, and I feel like the whole fucking music industry is like it's dictated at the, end of the, at the end of the day especially as an independent artist like the your fans are what are going to tell you like what is you know what they like yep. you know what i mean yep. so it's like i'm just putting out music i'm blessed to have a fan base that you know that vibes with my music and i just i'm just trying to grow that Welcome everybody to the Dreams Don't Have Deadlines podcast, where a dream is what you make it, but you'll never make it. Without a dream. That's right. I got my man Marwan with me. What up? We got the Dream Warriors in the house. Dwayne, how you doing, sir? You, yeah, yeah, Dream Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> we have the most enthusiastic team on the planet. The man who forgets to charge the cameras and leaves them rolling, man. That's not, my That's not your camera? <laughs> Gio, how you doing, man? You doing better than Dwayne? Yo, we got Jelly 2 Fly in the house. Big hey. up himself. Hey. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we are a movement and motivation over here. We are the pinnacle of perseverance. And how do we do that? How do we do that, Marn? Dreams don't have deadlines, baby. That's right. We so don't we stop. Keep, we don't stop. We keep pursuing them until we get them. <laughs> we want to make your dreams a reality, and that's why we're here. And how do we do that? We talk to like-minded individuals, people who've been through the mud, the dirt, the grime and they still have a story to tell because they persevered and we want to learn some of them jewels so if you want to learn some jewels this is the right place to be and uh, we have a very special guest in the house today she, she's uh really dope um first of all her music is amazing Fantastic. if you're not following her yeah. on wherever you listen to music do yourself a favor Go on to Haley Smalls. Just type that in on Apple, Spotify, whatever, YouTube. Check out all her videos and thank me later. Um, she's, uh, I can't say enough about her, man, and just her sound. She's she's doing R&B the right way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anytime you want to get in the mood to just do your thing and a little <laughs> bit of classic R&B vibe with, with, a, with, a, with a brand new twist, um, Haley Smalls is the person for you. So everybody, make some noise for Haley Smalls Woo! in the building. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> that was a very nice intro. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve every single syllable in that intro, man. Because honestly, like, uh, I'm a fan first, you know, and and I I tell you this all the time. Your shit is dope. Thank you. Uh, Cure Three is on fire. Shout out to Mega Man. Hey. Did you produce all of those, Joyce? Did I? No, me. Yeah, one did one, and I did the rest. Wow. Nice. Fire. Yes. Fire. Fire, yeah. man. Like, Thank wow. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> you know? So how you doing? I'm good. Can't yeah. complain. You know, just chilling, working. Working hard? Mm hmm You're so low-key. You're just like, <laughs> people don't know how fire, like, look at her. She's just humble and chilling yeah. and like, looking at her nails, making oh, sure everything I... blasts. <laughs> well, you're a beast. So you're a beast, yo. Like, own it. <laughs> yes, I appreciate you, know. you. I appreciate you. <laughs> no, you're really dope. You're really dope. Um, first hard-hitting question. We're going to get real serious right now. Mm -hmm. I need to know this. Um, what's your relationship with Notorious B.I.G.? <laughs> I'm a fan. I don't know. <laughs> you guys aren't related? No, no, no. Biggie Smalls, Haley Smalls, nothing? No? no, no? no okay, no, just no, making no. sure. No, no, All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second question. Um... Why did you use your real name? Is is Haley Smalls your real name? My real name is Haley Small. Small, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, people kept saying Smalls, so okay. honestly, I just gave them what they want. Right. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Yeah. How long so. you been doing this thing for? Um, uh, shit. 
a long time mm -hmm. I, I started music really young so um i think I, I started getting in the studio and writing when i was like 12. wow yeah wow mm -hmm. give me the whole history like let's talk you know, let's go all the way back what hospital were you burning oh like? my god <laughs> <laughs> Well, no. I'm just kidding, but like, no. let me know the story. Start from the top. Um, yeah. So I guess I, my parents said I was singing since I was like out the womb. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I don't really have, I didn't really have like a moment where I was like, hmm, I think I'm gonna do music. It was just kind of like, it was just it since the beginning. And so I kind of just. You grew up in a musical household. You're... Yeah, sort like my parents didn't do music, but they were music lovers. So right. my mom was like always playing music. And um, for whatever reason, I was just drawn to it since the beginning. So I was just, you know, it, w it was just my thing. Like the same way people play with toy, like kids play with toys. That, yeah. that was really just like my thing to do. Yeah. Um, I know for then... me, just start just to jump no, in yeah, here. My uh, I grew up in a musical household. My mm. dad wasn't a musician but he was like the local dj for right. their friends like he yeah. had the biggest record collection mm -hmm. and you know every sunday it was the smell of ackee and saltfish fried <laughs> dumpling plantain and dennis brown you Jeez. know what i'm saying <laughs> like that's what i grew up to or some soul music right. or some really good jazz so right. like that was infectious and you know some of my best memories of just just chilling out with him, mm -hmm. going through music and looking at like vinyl, you know, and looking right. at the covers and just picturing yeah. whatever was going on while the music was playing. That's right. Um, was was that similar to how? It was similar. Like my my mother is like one of those people that she's just like always playing music constantly, right. constantly, constantly. You go to her house, music's playing on her phone. Of you course, know what I mean? Yeah, so it yeah. was just it was just like that. So like a lot of my musical taste came from her musical taste when I was a kid. And what were those tastes? Uh, that was like she was playing like um, she would play like Tony Braxton, mm -hmm. Janet Jackson, mm -hmm. Michael Blackstreet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a lot of R&B. She's like a, a big R&B lover. So sure. that's really where like I think my my influence, my R&B influence came from. And then, um, yeah, they just, they just like, I guess they figured out that I could sing or I had a talent in music. And so then, like, my dad went straight dadager mode and was, like, <laughs> <laughs> trying to secure every opportunity he could for me. So then, um, yeah, I just ended up, like, networking with producers and stuff like that and just getting in studios and writing and recording from, like, a very young age. And then, you know, one thing leads to the next. So, wait, you were just like school music that was it that was it yeah i was literally just i was going to school i would like sing at the assemblies in elementary school and stuff like that i was like singing the national anthem then um my parents somehow got me to sing uh for for a blue jays game mm. uh, when it was called the sky dome right there um and then that must yeah. have been dope yeah, it was cool. I was like, I think I was nine or ten. So that was like, you know, it was a big deal. Wow. 30,000 people. Wow. It was a big Damn. deal for me at the time. All right. <laughs> Not sure. Yeah. Just flexing. Um, I think I was like nervous going into it, but then like 30,000 people doesn't feel like people. You know what I mean? It just yeah. feels like a blur. So, yeah, <laughs> so it was yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, you know, like I said, one thing leads to another. You you network, you learn, you work with people. Yeah. Um, I got in bad music contracts got out of bad music contract yep. i don't think you're you can't truly be an artist unless you've had at least three bad deals right. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like so if I think things ain't a, going wrong yes. like if you just if you're smooth sailing you're not a true artist yet yo yeah man and it, mean, it just it's just how the game goes like you yeah. have to toughen up your skin at some yeah. point because you're gonna need that energy to kind of get through and and know what you want from what you don't want i think right yeah, exactly. And you learn so much from those situations, you know. Um, all the mistakes I made really just helped me to be able to learn from them and then, you know, kind of help other people that I know, like, trying to kind of dodge the things that I had to go through. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What's it like? Um, I, I find it very interesting that you had so much support from your parents, and that's not always yeah. the case for everybody, yeah, right? Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about uh, the support system and the importance of that yeah that was you know like a super blessing because like you said a lot of people don't have that my parents were super supportive like mm -hmm. so supportive to the point where my dad was like one day he was just like you know what we're gonna buy you your own recording studio and put it in the wow. basement you know what i mean yes. so like he spent like 10 grand mm. put, put you know put the little music equipment down there when i was like 17 mm. and then that's when i learned to record myself and that was like the best skill that i ever learned you know um, and something that I always like try to impress upon other artists getting into the game is to like 
you know it doesn't mean you have to record yourself every time but just to have that skill to be able to be self-sufficient so you don't have to depend on going to a record you know going to a, a recording studio have to depend on mixers on engineers you know what i mean and even just to be able to understand the process you know to understand like about reverb and about eq like this shit is going on your music on your voice so you should understand it you know so Facts. you can get it to sound the way you want it to sound 100 so, percent. like i yeah. remember the uh there's a great Nipsey quote about uh, him being in the studio and the lessons he learned by mm. recording himself. Right. So whenever he went to a studio and the engineer was doing something and he would tell him to do it and the engineer would kind of argue with him, he would be like, okay, well then get up from the chair because right. I can do it myself. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And to yes. have that power it gives you a different energy it does. as an artist. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Do you engineer all of your music? I do, yes. Do? I record all my, my stuff. Um, I I mix my stuff too. With Megan helps me as well. We both yeah. collab on the mixes and mm. stuff like that because he's a great mixer. I, I'm, I've been mixing my stuff for years as well too. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I like being able to have a hand in everything I do. Like, not by any means i'm not like a control freak like i like to collaborate with people you. i don't believe you at all <laughs> <laughs> i'm not Stop i swear to god I, I like to i like to collaborate with people it's That's just it's really just um many many experiences with people where it's like you know like when you're when you're coming up people don't prioritize your stuff the way you mm. prioritize your stuff you yeah, know what of i mean course. like For sure. if you're beyonce everybody's gonna prioritize yeah, your shit, right? yeah, yeah but when you're coming up it's like you know, you have a select few people who are like really down for the cause. But other than that, you know, it's really just you. Like nobody's going to nobody's going to treat your shit the way that you're going to treat your 100%. shit. And so that's why I've really like tried to learn many different skills. Um, and I, like I said, it's not so, it's not so that I can do all of it. Because trust me, I really don't want to do all of it. <laughs> I don't. But I want to be able to at least understand and collaborate and, you know, be able to do the things that I need to do if I need to. You know, if I need to do something quick, then I can do it. I don't have to wait a week to get yeah, it. You yeah, know, done, yeah. Yeah. it shows in your music. I mean, we were just talking about it before you came here on how mm. clean your sound is mm, and how crisp you. the the sound so is from good. your music. So, yeah. you know, did that take a while for you to to get into that? Really, Haley's music is like wearing a duvet on the street, bro. It's just <laughs> warm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> make a, make a, what kind of duvet? <laughs> <laughs> Your metaphors? <laughs> They're ridiculous. Yeah, I'll be out. 1800 tequila. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, 18. Made the right way without compromise. Wow, wow. <laughs> Continue, That's sir. That's funny. Um, what are we talking about? Yeah, your crisp uh, duvet sound. Right. It's, uh, <laughs> Fantastic. No, did did it take you a while to find a rhythm and and how you're exporting your music now and mm -hmm. or did it um was it like you know, did, were you satisfied in how it sounded from the jump? Honestly. No, no, I definitely was not satisfied the way it was sounding. It definitely took a while, like in terms of like just a lot of trial and error. And I feel like um, before I met Megman in 2014, I was kind of just like <sighs> shooting in the dark. Like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I was just trying a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, and yeah, and it was just, it was really just a lot of like pleasing other people, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of people in my you know, on my team at the time that, you know, had the mentality of kind of just like fast food music, like, hey, let's just, you know, let's just try to do, you know, try to record six songs with this big producer and then go get that deal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These deals are shit deals anyways. So yeah, I'm yeah. thankful that I dodged all of that shit. But um, yeah, when, when I met Mega, he was like really impressing on, upon me that, you know, you need to find your sound. You yeah. need to develop your sound. Yeah. And that's like a, you know, like an old school thing because like nobody wants to really spend time developing anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody just wants to be out, like be on TikTok, be on the blogs, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Not spend time actually like, okay, wait, let's actually get you polished. So you're not like growing and going through that weird, awkward phase in the public, you know what I mean? And then everybody's saying like, oh, she's, oh, she's only going to last for this long or whatever, whatever. And the reason why they're saying that is because they can hear that the person's not polished they're not mm -hmm. developed so it's like okay you might sound good on one song but then you're gonna put five more out it's not gonna sound consistent it's not gonna you know there's no real actual sound you're just trying to recreate the the one viral song over and over and over again mm -hmm. people already heard it um so there was like there was definitely like years that were you know that i was really just trying to like polish develop figure out exactly how i wanted to sound 
Um, and yeah, like, I mean, I'm still doing that. I feel yeah, like you should yeah. always do that. You know sure. what I mean? Because you never want to stop growing. How did you guys meet? You know, for, for our viewers, Mega Man, I mean, we we know his reputation. Cool, yeah. One of the if best producers know. coming out of Toronto, Canada, period. He's so yeah. mad um, right now. <laughs> How did you guys meet? You know, how did you this You thought you were going to stay start? away behind the camera and yeah. know we're going to mention you in the building? Come on, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the real nigga. Hey, okay. <laughs> Brought to you by Capcom. So how did you guys meet? Um, yeah, I was living in Brooklyn at the time. Oh, okay. So uh, my management at the time wanted me to live there and just like soak up the vibes um so i was there for a bit and then a um, mutual person that we both knew that we were both kind of, like i wasn't really working with but i knew through somebody that i was working with mega was also working with and so he um he played me a bunch of beats not just from mega just like a bunch of beats from different producers and i ended up only picking two and both of them were megas but i didn't know him you know what i mean i knew of him but i didn't even know they were his beats and right. i didn't know him right. um so i ended up writing a song to one of them send it to the guy the guy sent it to mega and mega was like can you set up a session with her you mm -hmm. know so um so that's when we met up 2014 um we started working together and it was like a like kind of like a writing group at the time there was like a bunch a bunch of people that mega put together like writers key players um and stuff like that so we were just we were literally just in the studio like seven days a week doing like two three songs a night oh wow yeah it was like right off the hop eh? yeah it was wow. like writer's boot camp Word? yeah wow yeah that's what's up yeah Megan's Megan's like, fucking serious, work. <laughs> like... <laughs> he's rubbing hands he's like this, Birdman right now like you know the deal get to work animate no i'm just kidding <laughs> that's dope yeah. that's dope and i think that's what it takes right yeah. to you know really like you said develop that yeah. sound yeah it really helped me like writing wise because i was really shy when it came to writing with people and that like just knocked yeah that shit and it's hard out of finding me. good people it is yeah and it, you know and like when you're also writing with other like really dope writers because they were like and everybody had their own writing style so it's kind of like you're rubbing shoulders and you're getting that like friendly competition thing where you're like learning off of them they're learning off you mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're starting to like absorb different skills so that was like a that was a really uh, productive time for me mm -hmm. and just like my growth with writing and it just blossomed from there and like every time you guys every time you're working on a project it's yo mega was good i need a pack yeah like from the, like that was like you know that was a phase um the team you know kind of disintegrated after a certain amount of time and then meg and i continue to work and mm -hmm. you know it's hard to find people that you have good personal chemistry with and musical chemistry with mm -hmm. right um that is true i have definitely like worked with other producers of like you know high credibility and caliber that it, it was not the case right. <laughs> you know right, what i mean right, right. um just because the chemistry is not there the chemistry is yeah, not there yeah. or the intention is just not right. true <laughs> like you know what have I mean? you come so, across that a lot oh yeah i mean yeah. i think i think every female artist has you know that's just yeah. that's just how it goes like you know, you have to dodge a lot of bullets, um, especially when you're coming up, especially when you're young, like when you're in the industry young, like they, mm -hmm. they be trying to groom you. They be trying to like really just tell you like, you know, this is what you got to do if you want to make it. Mm -hmm. And it can be like, it can really be a mind fuck, you know, as especially when you're young and you mm -hmm. just don't understand certain things, you know, and you have these goals that you're trying to accomplish. And then there's pressure because then there's all these people that are like investing their time yeah. and their money in you. And you know yeah. what I mean? So it can really just it can really just, you know, I, I see why so many female artists end up getting, you know, going off that that path that, that path, they yeah, yeah that they intended and then yeah. they become very it could be discouraging yeah and i wanted to ask like how how does the mental health aspect kick into it from those challenges coming up as a female artist and meeting mm -hmm. people that might have ill intentions did you find that it was hard to battle like keep your head straight and be mm -hmm. positive yeah i did at times for sure like like i said especially like Especially when I was working with, you know, different people, I felt like, I just felt like, you know, there was, like I said, a lot of ill intentions, a lot of, you know, just, oh, you know, like I said, just the fast food thing, like, mm -hmm. put her in the studio with these people, just 
cut a check. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's really mm-hmm. like the mentality, cut a check. And then you have, and then you also have like a lot of these producers and writers that are like, they're not even going to work with you or give you or even give you their best work if they're not sleeping with you. And they'll yeah. tell you straight up. Really? Yeah. They'll literally tell you straight, straight up. up. You know what I mean? Yep. And so it's like a lot of women are faced with that and some of them go that route and some of them don't. And I just remember just finding myself at one point thinking like, is this even what I really like wanted to do? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Because it's like. I think Lauren Hill said it. She said, like, how could the thing that I love so much become something I hate? So true. Right. And like, I think when I heard her say that this was that was like back in probably like 2013. Um, It resonated because I was like, that's how I feel. Like, I feel like when I'm in these zones, when I'm in these like circles, I don't feel like I love this. You know what I mean? Because all of these people just have weird intentions, weird vibes, like you're not even doing it for yourself anymore, mm. you know? And it does, it can take a toll on you mentally, you know, but... Did you ever believe them? Well, in terms of what? In terms of, like, this is what you need to do to make it. You can't make it I did, this, yeah, yeah. I, I did, like, and that's, I think that's when I really started questioning whether I even wanted to do it anymore. And it was heartbreaking because music is something I love, you know? So it's not something that I ever, ever considered quitting, but I literally started to wonder if the industry was for me. Like, I was like, maybe... I'm just not meant to be in this industry, you know, because I didn't feel like I didn't feel like it like there's I guess for some people, it's just easy for them to just, you know, like, okay, well, if I got to do this, I got to do that. Mm. But I felt like it was breaking my soul. You know what I mean? So um, I just got to a point where I was like, I don't know. And then I literally met Mega the following year and he was like, you don't got to do any of that shit. (laughs) Right (laughs) on time. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, you don't got to do any of that shit. Like, you don't got to look like that. You don't got to sound like that. You don't got to do any of that shit. Like, what do you want to do? You know? And so that was the first time I was like, okay, maybe I can do it the way I want to do it. And everything changed after that, you know? Now I just... Shout, shout out to Mega Man, do. you know. Shout out Yo, to if me. you ever need new uh, <laughs> roster members, I need a manager, a coach, a life coach, <laughs> anything <laughs> like that, dog. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> He's quitting. That's it. That's amazing, yeah. though. That's that's great to hear. Yeah. What's the uh, what would you say the theme of your music is? Theme like concept wise. Yeah. Overall, all uh, encompassing. What do you? When somebody like wants to listen to Haley Smalls, like, what do you feel like they're gonna get? Um, I feel like they're gonna get like nostalgic vibes, you know, because um, the one thing that I really strive to put in my music is like feel, you know, because I feel like if I don't feel music, it doesn't do anything for me. Like, I need to feel something when I hear something, when I hear music, um, and so that's what I really try to put into my music. There's a lot of themes of love, Mm -hmm. obviously. Um, It's very, you know, the basis of it is Mm R&B. But I don't like to really box myself. So you'll obviously hear, like, you know, you'll hear hip-hop vibes. You'll hear, like, a little bit of country vibes here and there. You'll hear a little rock vibes here and there. Um, But, yeah, like, I just kind of try to, um, first and foremost, do what I love. But Mm -hmm. then also try to make things very relatable. you know, I say this a lot, but I just feel like music is healing. And so, like, vibrationally, and that that's why I feel like you have to hear something. You have to feel something mm-hmm. when you hear music. Because I feel like vibrationally, when you feel it, it's doing something to you mm-hmm. vibrationally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why people will say things like, oh, my gosh, this album saved my life. Or, you know, about their favorite artist and stuff like that. It, it's like... People will think, well, okay, well, how did it save your life? Well, it's because it's lifting you vibrationally. You know what I mean? And people need that. Like, so many things are draining people on a daily basis. Their job, their relationships, their families, like, so many things, right? So it's like, sometimes it's like, literally just listening to music is what lifts you enough to save you and keep you going. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Yeah. I agree. Are you like, uh, your writing process, where, where does that stem from? Do you hear the beat you go in is everything that you said it actually happened are you like what's the process like for you yeah like uh lyrically not everything i've said has happened verbatim but um you know i pull from my emotions my feelings sometimes other people's emotions like Mm -hmm. i always say like people i'll write songs about people and they wouldn't even know it like about their experiences like Mm if you tell me shit you're going through, I'll probably end up writing something about it. <laughs> Watch out what you tell Haley then. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna air you out or anything, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's probably, probably gonna be a little bit of, 
you know something in there um i i asked because like when listening to your music it it all feels very personal you know what mm, i'm saying it, mm -hmm. it feels like the emotions that you've actually gone through yeah. or you know projecting it doesn't feel like some kind of magical made up story like that story, you know yeah. like yeah yeah so I, i'm getting like i don't know like you know people say be careful if you date tw taylor swift because you know you're gonna get a song <laughs> out of that or you know so i was just wondering if it's that or if it kind of maybe like nod staring at the project window and just you know uh looking at his surroundings and drawing from that because it's all personal like it it's yeah. definitely is personal if i don't feel it then i i i'm not gonna write it you know what i mean but it's not like i'm not one of those artists that has to be going through something to write something right i can pull from dreams i can pull from you know um things that i felt in the past right um so i'm always pulling from somewhere inside of myself or inside of my space right. mm. but um but yeah being that r&b sound i wanted to ask like and primarily you listen to r&b you're, you're relating to love right so, right um you know how does relationships get into the mix of Haley small's life you know is it is it complicated to have a relationship uh, in, in, your, in your musical career, you know? And and do you draw from that? Is it, like, conflicting? How does that how does that mix into your life? I stay away from relationships okay. entirely. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Have you learned because you've... You, have they you don't mix. They don't mix. With, eh? music, with music. Like, honestly, they just don't. I've tried it. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And the reason is especially is just because people just don't understand what goes into this you know mm. what i mean when you love something and you're trying to do something at a high caliber like a career job it's not a nine to five no disrespect to a nine to five but yeah. you can clock out you know what i mean yeah. when you're doing a nine to five like it's nine to five mm -hmm. music is 24 yeah. 7 you know what i mean for me it's 24 yeah, 7 yeah, right yeah. and a lot of people don't understand that you know so no, it's, it doesn't work because it, it doesn't work period or because you haven't met the right person that understands i personally haven't i don't think i've even put myself in the in years i haven't even put myself in that space to look for it because i've just been so focused mm -hmm. on what i'm doing you know what i mean i'm not gonna say that it's impossible literally impossible people i'm sure you know people are doing it but it's just you're I goal have, oriented it seems like yeah you need I'm, to achieve them yeah I, I for me it's like even on the personal side like i'm very focused on bettering myself mm -hmm. and i feel like if you're not if you don't have when you have a relationship with somebody if they're not helping you move on the path that you're trying to go down then they're taking you off of it 100 percent. i think right. that's that's in basis for all of life I think. right like exactly if, if the, that person's not going to elevate you and support you to achieve your goals then yeah you got to put them on the side yeah. right because they they're going to maybe not even intentionally but they're going to pull you away from mm -hmm. it you know what i mean because you're investing something into somebody when you're merging your your life with somebody you mm -hmm. know what i mean so. <laughs> <laughs> what? that's rochester's <laughs> life right there he basically told here's him his thing. life this here's is your thing. life here's the thing right <laughs> okay dr phil i hate the fact that you're right no you're right because yeah. every relationship yeah. you know that i've experienced always felt like that no matter how good of the intention the person was yes you know i've dated people in the industry outside of the industry <laughs> wondering which one would kind of fit better right and at the end of the day you're and if you're in this business like you said you can't clock in and clock out right exactly. like this is a 24 365 thing mm -hmm. and not everybody's gonna understand that not everybody's gonna be cool with uh being se playing second fiddle to your dream you know right. with and something they will that, be <laughs> and they will be it's just yeah. it's just what it is right so it takes a special somebody with that being said i am of the belief that it is possible you know yeah. what i'm saying i have faith that there there should be somebody out there who can do it because i mean it has to be possible it's There's not no impossible There's i mean no nothing is impossible it's just, no it just, way. What are you talking about, <laughs> Jelly? It's like it's impossible. What are you talking about? It's impossible. No one's ever going to love what you love more than what you love. No, that's for sure. But finding someone by your side to support you, 
That's that's definitely <laughs> possible. What are you saying? We're going to be single for the rest of our lives? It's, here's the thing. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, that. <laughs> Jelly's like, no. I like people to be more single than men. Why you say that? That's facts. <laughs> that's true. We absolutely that's, don't. That's true. That's true. We don't. I feel no, like that's we need true. the Mega Man jump. Bling. That's facts. <laughs> it, and I'm not even saying that on some like on some like feminist shit. That's right. not even what I'm trying to say. Mm. But it's it's true. Like I think right now, especially, <laughs> I'm sorry to you guys, <laughs> but <Wow. laughs> y'all need to catch up. Like really In what and truly. Way? In what way? Like. I don't, this is not a personal attack. No, I, no, I no, 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 no. I'm intrigued here. Yeah, but like, generally speaking, I just feel like women are really starting to learn to be self-sufficient. It's not showing on the surface right now, but mm. it's happening. It's bubbling. It's bubbling, it's bubbling yeah. inside. Look on the surface, you ain't gonna see it. Yeah, but the need... volcano's alive. It's about yes. to erupt, basically. <laughs> and I just think that like no? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead go ahead go ahead i thought it was a great no, analogy it's great, it's great. you're up but you were saying i'm sorry yeah i just think that um you know the times of settling are just coming to an end you know what i mean right. mm. so there's just going to be a different standard a different standard in in meeting the requirements of like yeah and i'm ta not talking about material standard because mm. material standard is so much easier to meet mm. you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like personal spiritual Standard, emotional, you know, emotional things. standard. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's just a, it's, it's a different standard, and I just don't, I don't see as many men realizing this mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of women realizing it, but I don't see as many men realizing it, mm -hmm. and I think that's why I keep hearing a lot of women say that, yo, honestly, like I would rather stay single for the rest of my life than be with somebody who's not going to meet those standards. Yeah, I mean, you I know? think you shouldn't settle unless it's someone that's that's going to be exactly what you want, you know, not what you want them to be, but helping you in your life path and your career path to yeah. achieve all the dreams that you want. Because it's hard for me to think, listen, but if the, if what you're saying is true and the rest of us stay single, well, the human population is going to be instinct very, very soon. And it's we ain't got no life, true. Not, no life to go for. We don't for. have to have relationships to procreate. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, stop snapping over there. Can you stop, please? This is not a jazz court. This is true. This is true. Lounge. You, you're right. Yes, we can definitely procreate yes. without relationships. But I, I find it very hard to believe. Yeah, I, got, all right. You know what? Somebody's going to have to rep for us. All right? Listen. I want, listen, I want y'all to catch up. I really do. I want to see, I want to see a world where men and women, women and women, Men and men, mm -hmm. whatever it is, right. mm -hmm. are just living in harmony. But I just feel like right now it's a little bit of an. I think balance. it's a. I think it's a a different perspective when we're living in a Western world. I think the yeah. fact in, in the cities that we live in and the privileges that we have, the luxuries that we have living in in the developed countries, we have so much more opportunity to chase our dreams and yeah. and go for our goals. Right. And so there needs to be a little catch up on both sides. Right. Yeah, you fill that up, baby. You fill I it up real good. Listen, man. But I do believe that you what finish. what you're saying mm -hmm. um is is going to happen because the reality is men and women like uh, you got to think about it. A hundred years ago, women couldn't even vote. Jelly. Right. 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 A hundred years. In a hundred years, a lot has changed. Yes. And some of us have championed that and thought right. it was amazing. Right. And some of us are a little behind. Resistant they want a traditional it. woman and right. X, Y, and Z. And some some of them are not looking at it as a great opportunity for women to advance and, and mm -hmm. better the world. So right. there do, there is going to be a little catch up because there's a lot more freedoms here. You know, mm -hmm. before. 30 years ago, you couldn't get a divorce because you didn't want to know what that neighbor thought or this person thought or whatever the case may be. Now yeah. you can have a divorce within six months, no problem. Right. That's the, that's what I was going to say because we also live in this brand new world now where the grass is always going to be greener, right? Mm. Where we don't have, we have the option to just, if something gets too tough, we could just jump ship and, and find something else. There's going to mm -hmm. be something else out there, you know? it. And I think the reason why relationships aren't working is because people aren't willing to fight enough to make it work. 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When Agreed. things get a little tough, they're like, ah, this ain't the one for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I got to dip. So right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, but there also has to be kind of like a balance where people need to understand the perfect person is not 
perfect. there. Yeah, they're not going to be. The perfect person is not perfect. They're no, not, no, and no, it takes no. time. Like, and they're not right now. It develops when you time. When you think about um, marriages, which is a whole other thing, like I don't even know about marriages <laughs> anymore in 2023, but yeah. the people who are still married, right, for 40 years plus, right, like you hear about how many times, like, they've had to work through, and it hasn't always been rosy. I've heard yeah. about marriages where, you know, the spouses try to attempted murder on the yeah. person you know what I'm yeah. saying and you end up working through that yeah. right yeah, yeah. Absolutely. so and there's no and and I always say too that like I you can't judge anybody's relationship you know what I mean you can't you can't even say like oh well she should have left him because he did this or vice versa because mm. I think that at the end of the day like two people need to decide whether they want to like we're adults like you got to decide whether you it's worth it for you to work something out with somebody like like you said the perfect person is not perfect and I think like when I'm talking about standards, I don't mean because it's easy to think of it as like, well, you know, people have these checklists of like, well, they got to be this and they yeah, got to be this. Yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's not that's not that's not it. It's more so just like a person needs to be on a certain level mm-hmm. emotionally, vibrationally mm-hmm. that matches with you Absolutely. so that you can grow together. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, one person is going to be bringing yeah bringing the other person down yeah. you know what i mean well, it's I all about growth <laughs> i have hope for you Haley smalls thank you you will find that person and when you do you holler at us and be like ddhd dreams don't have deadline you know? <laughs> so if you want to holler at Haley smalls if you feel like you got that vibration and absolutely energy absolutely not <laughs> not looking <laughs> the frequency is 98.7 hertz um but no that's uh i i uh well, I know we went into this r- rabbit hole of yeah. relationship talk, yeah. um, but I wanted to ask you know if 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 you're not romantically engaged as an R and B singer, and it's been a while for for you to have a relationship, do you tap out of material? You know? Do oh you, no, no, no. You know, like I think, ooh, I think that the misconception as a writer is that you have to be going through stuff in order to write, but. For me, at least, it's not that way. Okay. Like I can pull from, I can pull from so many things. You know what okay. I mean? I can pull from, like I said, I can pull from past. I can pull from TV shows. I can p- pull from other people. You know, I, I still, I still love. You know what I mean? Just because mm-hmm. I'm not in a relationship, I still love. Mm-hmm. So I can still write about love. You True. know what I mean? Hmm? I'm sorry. I always see the world as a playground. That's true. Right. Yeah, exactly the world is a playground exactly like i still experience sadness heartbreak like all kinds of things you know what i mean i think when people think of love they think of like a specific kind of relationship but that doesn't mean that you still don't experience those things even if you're not in a relationship right Mm. so there's still so many outlets for me to write about that's dope nice that's dope Yo, your YouTube game is strong, strong, strong. yo, strong. Yo, like you, you constantly putting out uh, material and mm. and you're dropping new music all the time. Um, your YouTube page is phenomenal. Um, what is your marketing strategy? Your artistic strategy in terms of your goals and and in, in YouTube. I think it's really just been like consistency. To be honest with you. Um, you know there was obviously algorithms are always changing that changes a lot um but just through the years i've just been very i've just been really focusing on being consistent right um the perk of not being signed is that you can and being independent is that you can release music whenever you want right um and so like i've really tried to kind of going back to what we were talking about before but i've situated myself where i can I can do what I want. Like I can shoot a music video easily. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be like a super, you know, intricate music video, just visuals, put them out on YouTube. You know what I mean? Um, I have volts of music that I can release anytime. So it's, it's really just like consistency and, um, and yeah, and just understanding the business. I think that's just really been my strategy is just understanding the business. Like I say, like I always say, Again, with like, you know, understanding your music, you also have to understand the business aspect of it because it is a business at the end of the day, unless you're doing it as a hobby, right? Mm. Um, So I've just been big on understanding, you know, the business in terms of marketing and strategizing and stuff like that. It looks great. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, really dope. Your visuals and I I wouldn't even downplay like, yeah, like your videos are, are, they really tell the message of your music and 
fine. They don't have to be shot by, you know, Hype Williams or whatever. Right, right. But, like, you you put people in the zone that you want them to be in, yeah, right? And yeah. I think people <clears throat> might um, talk themselves out of stuff when they're shooting videos because they're like, oh, man, it's got to be this and it's got to be that. And I don't think yes. I can get a Bugatti. So I just I'm not going to shoot the video, you know. Right, right. But I think um, when people are fans of your stuff, they just kind of want to see you in your element and whatever right. that is. And that's I think true. you can capture that very well. Thank you. Yeah, that that's very true. And I think that's something that you're 100 percent right about. A lot of people get very <clears throat> caught up on the details of not having the budget to do this or that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I understand that, but I think, you know, this is why you got to kind of sometimes get creative with things. Yeah. There are like, you know, songs that I've released that I've wanted to do videos for, but I just know what kind of budget that video needs for it needs, needs for it. And sometimes that's just not, you know, that's just not in the realm or in the scope of things. Right. Um, so, you know, like if it needs to be a Hype Williams video and that's just not really a thing at the moment, then that's cool. It can just be a single. Yeah. Um, and then there's other, you know, there's other songs that you can do where, you know, you can, you know, you could still do something. You still have a nice little budget for it, but, you know, it works with the, with the song, with the concept. You could still really, you know, draw some nice visuals. And you said it's consistent, something. right? Like, I think Just, yeah. consistency is like one of the strongest words. And I've been preaching that from the right. beginning. I, I right. knew that if you can stay consistent and constantly give your fans or whoever follows you right. uh more material you know like obviously it has to be quality but you know you're you're seasoned so like you know it feels like everything you do is just a smash you oh, know thank you. but you're you're also able to be consistent and right. when you do that your yeah. fan base will grow you know it's yeah. what's the point of having a hundred thousand dollar video if you're only dropping one a year when you can shoot yes. some for five to ten and then you can have you can drop something every month. You know? Yeah. And also, like, you know, I've, I've seen people like spend a big bag on a music video and then put no money into like marketing, marketing and making yeah. people be able to see yeah. it. So it's like now you have like, you know, you have like a seventy five thousand dollar video or fifty thousand dollar video yeah, no on YouTube see. and it has like five hundred views. You know yeah. what I mean? Marketing, it's like because yeah. the way these algorithms work nowadays, you know, it's, it's so different. Like. There was a time where however many followers you had is how many however many people would see your shit right, and that's just right. not the world we live in anymore you know so you really have to like find ways to make sure that people see your stuff because i have you know i have fans that will constantly be telling me like yo i missed this and i have the bell notification <laughs> on i have the like notify you know they, yeah. they do all of that but they still don't get it you yeah. know what i mean so yeah. so you really have to push your your music out there and understand like where to spend you know mm. any tips for any uh up and coming artists that you know putting their stuff out on youtube yeah i would just say like i said like just understand that like you know obviously you want your stuff to be of quality mm. i always want my you know my visuals my music to be of quality um and that's like a huge thing for me but at the same time like you also have to make sure that you can get people to see it so you know um whatever it is whatever your budget is whether you're an independent artist and you're just grinding and trying to put your paycheck into your music or you know if you have help it's just really about understanding like you know how to how to place your resources right. you know properly um i mean that's a whole thing so i don't it think is. i could summarize yeah. it yeah. but just you know, trying to give the people yeah. what they want you know <laughs> how do you uh how do you stay so consistent over the years do you have like a goal board a vision board are you like very goal oriented on a yearly monthly basis or is it just you know what you feel what you go for like how, how does yeah that i would i i i would probably classify it as intuitive strategizing okay yeah like i don't i don't believe that in again? intuitive strategizing that sounds fancy <laughs> hashtag <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why i say that is because um I'm just very against rigid st strategizing. Okay. So, uh, you know, like I've seen people do this where they'll be like, okay, I'm going to spend the next month, I'm going to shoot five different music videos. I'm going to shoot, you know, this many content. We're going to release the first video on this date, the second video on this date, third video on this date. You know what I mean? And so they have like a six month to a year plan already. Hmm. And I personally think that that's a very hard way to 
plan and strategize and it's because things change you know what i mean like today is not tomorrow six months from now is not today right and so so many things change in the world things are going to change in your space opportunities are going to come up you may not be in the space that you're in now six months from now you might be thinking completely differently you know what i mean it doesn't really give you space to grow and so that's why i say like intuitive strategizing is really just you know like being intuitive about it it doesn't mean that you can't you know you can't plan but you have to be able to be flexible about about planning and so that's just that's really how i do things is like i might have some sort of idea of what i want to do but I'm totally open to it changing and it does not freak me out. It does not make me go into panic mode if something completely changes, like Mm. completely. I could have a whole album planned to release. And if it doesn't make sense for that to come out, then it's not going to come out. That's just what it is. And that doesn't break my heart. You know what I mean? I just understand that. That's just how it goes sometimes, you know. I like that. Yeah. I hate holding on to music. Yeah, I, I just want to get. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Jelly snapping. She's right. She's right. <laughs> I just want to put everything out though. Like, you know, <laughs> holding on to music for me is like, uh. no, it's hard though. I, I will, I will, I will agree with that. That honestly, when I hold on to music for too long, it never comes out. Right. That's just what happens. Like, I have, I have volts of music that yeah. I don't think will ever come out. People will never hear it. You know what I mean? Because once you hold on for it to it for too long you're not in the same space anymore you're growing you know what i mean so it's like if i've had a record for a year like there has been times where a record that's like a year old has come out but it's not often and usually when like when a year passes it's like you look back on those songs and i know that a lot of people would probably hear them be like no this is fire you know what i mean but it's like i'm just not in that space anymore Mm. like i'm 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 growing past that like I'm delivering better. I'm doing better harmonies. I'm writing better. You, you know what evolve, I mean? I'm yeah, evolving, yeah, right? So yeah. it's like, and I never want to stop evolving. I don't want to look back at my music two years from now and feel like, oh yeah, I could drop this. It's the same as what I'm doing now. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, that's a bad yeah, sign to yeah. me. You know? <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yeah. So at what point did you, did you realize that music is it? That's all you want to do? I don't, I, like, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that moment ever happened that for me. I think it was eh? just, it was like I was I was born and it was there. Yeah, like like, it was, it's weird. Like I never, I was never like, "Hmm, maybe I'll do this instead or maybe I'll do both. Like music has really just always been it. I I think, I think music chose me. I don't think I chose music, you know? So, yeah. You're lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Snap, 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 (laughs) snap, snap. (laughs) <laughs> so what's uh what's laid out for Haley Smalls in terms of the future? Like what what are the what do you do you envision yourself and like top ten billboard world tour all these things? Like what do you envision for yourself? I think those things would be nice. Um, I'm not attached to them. Okay. Because I'm not attached to anything in terms of like uh, the future. I feel like when you attach yourself to things, number one, they never happen. Um, and number two, again, it's not, things change. Like you have to be able to evolve and change personally as well. Like I used to be very set on what I thought my life should be like. Mm. I think that that's problematic. Sure. Um, and, and uh, that's not, that's not an attack on anybody who has that mentality. Mm. But for me, I feel like it was problematic um <clears throat> i would love to see my music reach the highest level of you know possible mm-hmm. because why not right um but at the same time like i'm just extremely big on peace of mind on being like staying true to who i am uh not making sacrifices that compromise any of those things and true. i feel like um i feel like when you start entering those spaces it's very easy to do that. It's very easy yeah. to compromise. It's very easy to start losing your way, you know. And that's because there's a lot of people that become involved. There's a lot of money that becomes involved, right? And it's possible to do it at a high level and still keep your, you know, keep keep your your morals and keep your, you know, keep doing music the way you want yeah. to be doing it. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just a much uh, narrower mm. path. Mm-hmm. And so that's the path that I'm... Then I'm on. So you're doing it f- because you love what you do and this mm-hmm. is what you 
what you want to do at the end of the day. Yeah, doesn't like this, matter what path you lead because you love it. Right. Yeah. I think that's that's just really where I'm at. You know, um, I've had a lot of opportunities presented to me. Um, I could be in much higher places, you know, but I'm just not willing to sacrifice certain things to get there. Right. So we had we had Infinite on the show. Uh, you know, Shut legendary Rexdale, mm -hmm. Canadian rapper, mm -hmm. and he was talking about decisions <clears throat> that he made um, when his career was at a certain path, you know, and mm -hmm. he chose the, the, the choices that he made. Um, other people might say they were the wrong choices, but right. he chose, you know, his morals right. over becoming, maybe elevating his career. Mm -hmm. Right. And when he looks back on it with hindsight, he's like, I really don't have no regrets at the time. It's like, oh, you're not too sure. Right. But uh, going through it and looking back on it, it's like, how can you live with yourself knowing that you had to adjust or throw away your moral code to get to where you are right, right now? So I think it's important to have that. And uh, what you said about goals is actually really cool because um, you're leaving it open. Right. Because you said once you have a goal or this thing set in mind if you're not getting that exact thing then you feel like a failure right, right exactly uh, but i don't um i think it's important to have a goal right. obviously to yeah. go where you want to go right. but you also have to leave room for god to do his work yo you know what i'm saying right, exactly. you're not gonna whatever you think is your plan you know it's god's plan it's not your plan yeah so when things aren't going the way that you think it's not because you're failing. It's because there's a bigger purpose for you. So you exactly. have to leave the door open for other things to happen. And a lot of people miss, miss, they miss that, you know? Yeah, it's very true. And I, you know, I, I also, building off of what you said, I think that sometimes when you become so fixated on something that you want, you don't realize that there's something bigger coming for you. And then you miss out on that because you're just like, well, this is what I want. It's like, you know, you see this like beautiful house that is a nice big house and you're so fixated on, I want that house. Right, right. But what if there's a fucking mansion yeah, that's, right. that's, that's waiting for you and all you could see was that house. house yeah. You know what I mean? That's all it. you've been fixated and focused on. So yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, so that's why I say like, you know, I would love, I would love for my music to go to the highest level, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not fixated on anything. I'm just fixated on making sure that I'm making myself happy. I'm, you know, I'm doing things in the way that I feel comfortable in right. the way that, you know, I'm growing right. as a person, I'm growing musically. Um, and I focus more on like also the fans, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like people also get really caught up in like industry stuff. And I feel like the whole fucking music industry is like it's dictated at the, end of the, at the end of the day especially as an independent artist like the your fans are what are going to tell you like what is you know what they like yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so it's like i'm just putting out music i'm blessed to have a fan base that you know that vibes with my music and i just i'm just trying to grow that yeah as much as possible i love that man yeah. i love that Haley for the fans, yo. You know what I'm saying? Get it right. Yeah. I love that. I think a lot. That's a jewel right there. People yeah. miss that part, you know. Yeah. And they're looking at it from an uh, existential point of view, where it's like followers and this, this, and that. But like, right. are you really connecting with the people who yeah. actually love your shit? Like, who yeah. are commenting, commenting on your stuff, or sharing your music, or listening to it, or anything like that? You know, actually showing you genuine love. Right. And it's more than just those numbers it's making those connections so right. yeah, yeah i agree with that 100 mm -hmm. percent. i had a question about like um uh, just in, in general for artists i find it's a can be a lonely path mm -hmm. um your friends a group for a friend circle can be small mm -hmm. and uh, some people don't understand your lifestyle we're talking about relationships yeah. but do you find that it's a lonely road as well do you find you have to be mentally strong or do you have a lot of support around you I think you do have to be mentally strong and I think that it can be lonely if you perceive it that way for sure like you know if um, loneliness means that not having a whole bunch of people around you you know what I mean yeah like that if that's loneliness then it would be considered loneliness I don't find it lonely because I would rather have you know a small group of people around me that I actually can trust than mm. a whole bunch of people you know around me like when I was younger like you know, I had a bunch of friends. Mm -hmm. um, did they actually really like fuck with me like that? Yeah. No, because they would be here if, if right. you know what I mean? Right. So it's just yeah. like, there's people that, you know, there's people that 
really understand you and they're they understand what you're doing and they support you and i'm just like honestly blessed to have enough that could fit on one hand you know what i mean that's all that's all that you need yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and um yeah i've been i've been honestly i've been blessed to to be around people that are are very good-hearted people and you know understand things from a larger perspective Mm -hmm. that's really what i that's really what I look for when it comes to aligning myself with people in music and outside of music is just people who can see things from a larger perspective, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Dope. You have a, uh, I heard through the grapevine, you have a, some kind of relationship with Bounty Killer. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the homie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah, Legendary, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did, what's going on with that? Yeah, he's just so humble, man. Yeah. Like, he's he's super humble. He just, you know, he, he reached out to me. We just connected on Instagram. You wow. Know? So, yeah, like, yeah. he's just fire. He'll just hit me up randomly and just be like, you know, he'll, like, connect me with, like, radio stations in Jamaica and stuff like that. Fire. And yeah, he's just, he's, like, so, 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 so humble. The wild yeah. lord. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, yo. he's super cool. Any uh, other industry friends that um, are cool? Because, like, we talked about... The assholes, you know, yeah. <laughs> about there, but it's good to hear that somebody there's are people out there who actually just genuinely There are. There definitely there definitely are. They're hard to find. Um track masters. Mm. Yeah. Um they're That's what's up. Yeah, they're super they're super dope people. You guys work together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Yeah. 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 They're I've worked with them even just on a personal level. They're just yeah. really really good people wow. honestly like super humble they must have stories uh, for days oh my god yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can't tell you though yeah. <laughs> holy shit <laughs> absolutely yeah poke is like the greatest storyteller too oh my god damn yeah no that's, that's legendary. no that's my guy like they're they're just like every once in a while you will come across people who are just so humble and it's like it means so much, especially when they're on that level and yes. they've done what they've done because they don't have to be humble yeah, at all. But yeah. they're just so humble, just really dope to be around. And you so. mentioned it earlier, right? Like, just like your relationship with Mega. It's like when you find somebody, and I believe in this 1,000%, yeah. once you find somebody that you actually connect with, you should hold on to that person because yeah. it, it's like finding a rare jewel. You it know? is. Like, because in this industry, there's a lot of people on the other side of that. Yeah. So if you find good chemistry, good vibrations, good connection with somebody, do your best to hold on to it if it falls apart it falls apart yeah. but it shouldn't be from something you did you know right i agree and i i would i would told mega this many times i'm like i'm so glad that we met after all my, the bullshit that i went through because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it helped me to really recognize like the kind of person he was because i was just like okay wait this is different yeah, yeah. like you know what i mean like it, it's not i didn't feel like there was any like expectations i felt like the intentions were pure i felt like like he's like like one of the hardest working people I know, you know what I mean? Just not on any bullshit. And it was really easy you for me to You don't have to, to say spot. that because he's here, right? Because... <laughs> I know. He, to be honest <laughs> can, with you... Like, we can get the real thing. To be it's honest fine. with you, he would be so much more comfortable if I was like cussing him off right now <laughs> the more the more good things i say the more he's like oh my god let me get out of here I'm getting hot <laughs> so i'm really actually i'm re- i'm really actually just torturing him right right, right, right. knowing okay. <laughs> that's what real friends do i like that i like that man. but yeah no it was you know it, like i said i was able to recognize it very very easily i feel like when you're um and i've seen this before i feel like when you're fresh in the industry mm-hmm. and you meet good people straight off the bat you can actually end up taking that for granted because you don't even realize the bullshit that's out there. You know what I mean? And then people will mess up that relationship and then work with other people and realize how hard it is to find good people. And then they'll be like, yeah. oh, man. Too late. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too late. Yeah. Too late. I've kind of built my whole career off of that, yo. And, you know, um, I'm lucky enough to say that because I came out, you know, when I was like in my 20s, early 20s. And, yeah. um the relationships I have now only are still here because I was a good person to those people back then. Right. right? right. And those people who were interns are now CEOs or they're in positions where they can help me a little bit more, yo, mm-hmm. you know? So right. um I I didn't do it on 
purpose. I just wanted to be generally a good person. Okay. And when you're in the industry, you see all of the fuckery that happens. And I never wanted to be that guy. Right. So I did my best to not. And um, I'm paying it for it in dividends right now. So anybody out there, like, you know, relationships are going to fall apart. I think that is a part of the business. It yeah. does happen. It's not always going to work out. And like I said, you haven't made it until you get fucked over like at least three times. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to happen. But um, honestly, just try your best to not let it be because of anything that you did. Don't let your ego get in the way of doing something good, right. uh, of making great music, of creating something special and making connections with people who you feel deserve it. You know, keep them close. Um, I agree. That's important. That's important. Um, I want to ask a question and you're not allowed to dodge it. OK, you're not allowed. I need an answer for this one right here. Uh, if you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? I think I already answered that question. No. Not, that nothing. No, I need an answer. I know. You're not running from it. You're what? not running from it. Would you know. be a, a poet, an author? Um, I feel like a lawyer. A, <laughs> maybe. Lawyer? I don't know. I feel like a therapist. Um, no, I think. Uh, fuck, I therapist? Don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'd be. A love therapist. A love therapist? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I want to listen to people's problems all day. <laughs> I don't you think so. Your face. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I'm maybe a writer. Maybe. Maybe a writer? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. All I mean, right. it's the closest thing. I feel like we'll stick to that one for now. Sure. What are you reading? Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Give us some recommendations. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, what kind uh, of books are you reading? <laughs> some deep stuff. Um, I don't, I, mm, I'll be reading like The Law of One. The Law of One. Never yeah. Heard of I'll be okay. reading like, uh, there's a book called The Dark Night of the Soul. Okay. <laughs> it's based on a poem from like, we can't Why? see your face. Like Move your hand you from your face, face. I'm not talking. sir. Yeah. Don't look. <laughs> sorry. All right. Sorry. All right. I need, I'm sorry. I got to be on camera at all times. You understand me? <laughs> what are you reading, though? They want to see your. Talking. They want to see your face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the Dark Night of the Soul. Nice. I was reading that. Um, what else was I reading? You know, Jelly should be our designated. Uh, <laughs> Keeping it jazzy yeah, over here. Ke I know. Keep a tip jar in front of her, too. Right? Yeah, she, she enjoying the 1800s. You read all these? You know about these books? I haven't heard of none of them. No, this, the two, she just thought the first one. I didn't hear that. Before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, um, I, I, I really like to read, like, um, like metaphysical stuff, mm -hmm. um, self help, mm -hmm. things on spirituality. Yeah. yeah. Seems like you have a good head on your shoulders like you seem like you're pr very awake and like spiritual and very alert and mature for for everything that you've yeah. gone through so that's like the only other thing i do besides music too yeah yeah all right maybe maybe an author it is then in the other life i like it yeah. see we figured it you wanna, out you want to ask a wrap-up question <laughs> okay all right so this is the dreams don't have deadlines podcast and we want to thank you for being on here, Haley Smalls. You incredible. We got a lot of jewels from you today. Mm -hmm. uh, all the Dream Warriors out there, make sure you follow her. Um, but we want to ask you: um, there are there is somebody out there, right there, who has they're they're at that crossroads and mm -hmm. they don't know what to do. Whatever their goal is, they they just want to probably give up at this point. Right. So, what would you tell that person? Look in that camera and tell them why dreams don't have deadlines. I would say that dreams don't have deadlines because if it's your dream and it's something that you love, then instead of being focused on when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen, the best way to get there is to just take things a day at a time and focus on what you're supposed to be focusing on. So if every single day you're doing things to get yourself there, you'll get yourself there a lot faster than if you're so fixated and focused on the future or the perceived deadline, right? I think a lot of people waste a lot of time by focusing on a deadline or an outcome. Um, like Rochester said, it's not, it's not that you can't have a goal, but, you know, be open to other perceived outcomes, you know, because sometimes the way that we think can be smaller than what is actually, you know, meant for us or is coming for us. Um, and I just think that, you know, make sure that what you're doing is what you love. Educate yourself on what you're doing. 
Uh, make sure that you're involved in what you're doing. Surround yourself with good people. Um, surround yourself with people that align with you vibrationally. Know who you are because you're not going to be able to surround yourself with people that, you know, align with you if you don't know who you are. Um, that so that's probably nice. the first thing, to that be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and everything else will be good. <laughs> great advice. <laughs> Some great advice. Love it, love it. And, yeah. Okay, listen. If you didn't learn something, you you weren't paying attention right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on here and doing this. I, Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, this was really cool. I hope um, <clears throat> you had a good time, honestly. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to hear more stuff, maybe play some music after. I don't know if you got to run, but um, I had a great time. Yeah, man, it was wonderful. Dreams don't have yeah, deadlines. Learned a lot. Podcast. Thank you, everybody, because a dream is what you make it, but <laughs> you'll never make it. Without a dream. Let's go. Let's get it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Shout out Mackenzie Smalls in the building. Hey. Check out her music hey. on Spotify, on YouTube. Oh, no. shout out Mackenzie. Shout out Mackenzie. And yeah. look out for Nikima, new artist coming out of Texas. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> My name is Juice. My name is Marwan Manomini. And we got Haley Smalls. Let's get it. That's a wrap. Work hard and I handle my business. Look up in the sky, whole squad, let's get it. No limit, no. No, no. no.